Welcome back to the Mental Health Minute. I'm Dr. Emily Mayfield, a licensed psychologist. Thank you for watching this video and being a part of the Mindset Therapy family. In this video, I'm going to discuss whether a relationship with a narcissist can work. Check out the previous video where I discuss narcissistic rage and why you might feel helpless during these rages from your partner. But first, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I hope to create a community of subscribers that can share their own stories on mental health and mental health struggles as a way to reduce the stigma of mental health. By subscribing to this channel, you'll receive information on all things mental health while connecting with others. Also, stick around to the end to hear the tip of the day. These are quick tips on ways you can start to improve your overall mental and emotional functioning. So let's go over a quick summary of what narcissism is. At the core of narcissism is the illusion of superiority, grandiosity, and a sense of entitlement. The narcissist desires to be the center of attention, treated as if they are special, and needs constant admiration from those around them. They demonstrate difficulty in managing their emotions and struggle in accepting any type of criticism. When they encounter situations in which there is real or perceived criticism or judgment, boundaries placed on them or expectations of being held accountable for their behaviors, they experience what is called a narcissistic injury. While narcissists try to present themselves as confident and superior, they actually lack any strong sense of self and self-esteem, and this is what makes them overly sensitive to criticism. When a narcissist feels criticized, they experience hum humiliation and shame, and they react with rage or passive-aggressive behaviors in response to the narcissistic injury received. The rage can be obvious through yelling and insults being thrown, or it can be more covert with passive aggressive behaviors that are more prominent. So some examples of overt rage behavior would be yelling, screaming, raising your voice, their voice, name calling, throwing or hitting things, and physical violence directed at people. Some examples of covert or passive aggressive narcissistic behavior are verbal hostility, so covert criticism of someone in their ideas or invalidation of someone's emotions and experiences. Humor disguised as jokes, so sarcasm, teasing, and jokes. The comments are offensive and belittling, and when you express your dissatisfaction with the statements, you are considered too sensitive. Silent treatment. When you have done something the narcissist doesn't like, they may give you the silent treatment. This places them in control because it shuts down the opportunity for discussion or, or emotional connection. Stonewalling is a specific term often seen with narcissists who refuse to communicate or cooperate. Blaming. During a narcissistic rage, you are the cause of all their current and past problems. They will blame you for things you did and didn't have control over. This narcissistic rage can destroy a relationship because the partner becomes a target. The narcissist is unable to reflect on their own feelings and actions, so the attack becomes about you when it's really about them. You can imagine that this is difficult for a relationship because there's little communication and the non-narcissist partner is considered the cause of all issues and problems. The partner may start to feel helpless. So how do you handle narcissistic rage in a relationship and can the relationship ever work? So first you wanna watch for baiting. Baiting is when the narcissist tries to draw you into their conflicts to then attack. Control is at the root of baiting. If the narcissist can draw you into their conflicts, then they can control you. When they bait, they want a reaction out of you, and by taking the bait, you are giving them exactly what they want, a response. The bait is oftentimes an attack on you, so your natural tendency would be to defend yourself. However, this only gives the narcissist more control and more opportunity to manipulate you and tell you how you're wrong. Don't take the bait. Ignore them. The best way to not take the bait is to ignore them and not get wrapped up in their drama and desire for conflict to begin with. If they do try to bait, step away and don't respond. This requires you to be on your toes, especially in the beginning, but it's necessary for you to become better at ignoring. Set boundaries for yourself. The narcissist doesn't care about you to include what you think or feel. They will not modify their behaviors if they hurt you, so the only person looking out for you is you. 
set boundaries and hold firmly to them. When you set boundaries, the narcissist will try to bait you again because your boundaries mean they are losing control. Remind yourself of the boundaries and don't move them at all. Even one small instance of lowering your boundaries gives the narcissist an entry into their controlling tactics again. Don't take things personally. This one is difficult. When someone is verbally attacking you and pointing out all areas in which they think that you're a failure, it's hard to not take it personally. The words they say do apply to you, so you think how they must think that those things are true. To not take things personally doesn't mean it doesn't affect you. It means you accept that it is about their desire to gain control. The desire to control is about them and not you. You are merely a person in the way at that moment. However, the attack would be similar with a different person in that same position. So can a relationship with a narcissist work? The answer is maybe, and most of the change will come from the non-narcissistic partner. Change requires someone to see their faults and areas needed for improvement. This level of insight is not possible for a narcissist. If a narcissist looks inward, they will see that they're not confident, capable person they want to present themselves as. This inward looking is exactly what they try to avoid in their lives to prevent narcissistic injury. If you can accept the narcissist is unlikely to change, but you're not happy in the relationship, then you will have to make the most changes. This might be in lowering your expectations or learning to only engage in activities that your partner enjoys. You might find that a sense of you is lost as you try to make the relationship work, but this might be a cost you're willing to pay to remain in the relationship. Only you can make that choice and know what is right for you. Once you accept the narcissist is unlikely to change, then you can put your focus and energy on changes in you that can be made. This isn't fair, but fairness is not a trade often seen in narcissistic relationships. So now for today's tip of the day, prioritize. If you let your to-do list get away from you, you'll see that there's an endless list of things that need to get done. Prioritize a task and put aside those things that don't actually need to get done. Make note of them so that you can come back to them in the future, but for now pick the tasks that need to get done and prioritize your to-do list so it's not so overwhelming. If you enjoyed the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button to be a part of the Mindset Therapy family. I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Have a good day.